In this video, what I'd like to do is come up with a state space representation of the system that you see here. And this system contains a mass of M. It contains two springs connected to the mass. They have a spring constant of K1 and K2. It contains a damper force of C and it contains a input force of U, which is acting downward. Now, it, we are also looking at our output Y, which is the displacement that this mass moves. And we want to obtain a state space representation. So what it boils down to is we want to be able to fill out this equation right here. X dot is equal to AX plus BU. This is the state equation. And the output side of the equation is going to be y is equal to cx plus du. Now, what are these variables? Well, x right here is going to be my state variables. u right here is going to be my input vector. This x is just the derivative of my state variables. Then we have a, B, C, and D. And these are just matrices that have coefficients that we need to solve for. So this is my system matrix. B is my input matrix. C is my state output matrix. And D is my control output matrix. And the only thing I was forgetting is Y. And Y is just going to be my output vector. Now, why would we do this? It's a different representation of what we've been doing. Uh, state representation can handle multiple input, multiple outputs very easily. Uh, in a higher order differential equation, they can be very difficult to work with, but with the state representation, we're going to make everything a, uh, be represented by a first order system, which are easier to work with. Now, we're only going to focus on setting up the equations. We're not going to focus on solving them. So let's look at the free body diagram. With our free body diagram, I have a mass. And we're going to assume that these springs are unstretched to begin with. If I move down, this is going to compress spring with the constant K2. So it's going to want to push up to its unstretched length and it's going to have a force of K2Y. Now, if I move down, this is going to stretch this spring over here. That's also going to want to pull back up to its unstretched length with a force of K1Y. And then C, well, if I'm moving downward, if I'm moving downward here, my velocity is down. So it's going to oppose the relative velocity and it's going to have a force of C times its velocity, which is Y dot. Now, I still need to put in my applied force, which is U. This is my free body diagram. From here, I can get my equation of motion with the sum of my forces is equal to mass times acceleration. In acceleration, we're gonna be using Y double dot. We're also gonna be saying anything down is positive, just to make it easier since that's how I've defined my output Y to be. Okay, so if we just go across, we're going to get this is minus K1Y plus U minus CY dot and uh, minus K2Y is equal to MY double dot. Now, for right now, I'm going to rearrange this equation. So we get MY double dot plus CY dot, I'm going to combine the K1 and K2 and take out the Y and move it over to the other side. So we're gonna have plus K1 plus K2 times Y is equal to, U is going to stay on this side. And now we have our equations of motion. So we have to go and we have to now fill out these matrices. Now, when we're choosing our state variables, we look at our equation and we have a second order differential equation. So we're gonna to need to have two state variables. So I'm gonna start with x1 
and we're in terms of y right here. So x1 is going to be equal to y, then x2 is going to be equal to y dot. So here, oops, that that's bad, but here and here. Now, if we take the derivative of x1, we get x1 dot is going to be equal to y dot. And if we do x2 dot, that's going to be equal to y double dot. So now what we have is we have, we can represent this with a first order equation by substituting these values in. Now, the last thing I want to point out is these two equations right here. So we have an x1 dot is equal to a y dot, x2 is equal to y. So what we get right here is one of our state equations, which is x1 dot is equal to x2. Why is this important? Well, when we go back to these, these are all vectors over here. So I know I need two states, which this is, this x dot right here is the derivative of my state. So this is going to be x1 dot, and this is going to be x2 dot. This is going to be equal to my A matrix times my state variables, which are x1 and x2. Then it's going to be plus some matrix times my input vector. Well, I only have one impact, one input, and that's u. So this is just going to be equal to u. So now, right, this is one of the equations that we're looking for. And we'll get to that. We can fill that one in now. So we're trying to figure out what this x1 dot is equal to. Well, it's equal to x2. If we write this out in a little bit of an expanded form, this is equal to 0 x1 plus 1 x2 plus 0 u, right? These x1, x2, and u don't come into the equation for x1 dot. So we can say this is 0, this is 1, and this is 0. Right, because when we multiply this, this is going to be 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 plus 0 times u is going to give me x1 dot. So that's good. Now let's work through our second state variable. Well, here we now need to go through the equation of motion that we have, and we need to substitute. So I'm going to have m. Well, y double dot is equal to x2 dot from right here. Then we're going to have plus c y dot. We want to use x2. So plus uh, c times x2 plus k1 plus k2 times y. y is x1. So now it's in terms of our state variables and this is equal to u. Now this time we need to do a little bit of work. We need to solve for x2 dot so we can get this equation right here. So we need to solve for x2. When we solve for x2, we get x2 dot is equal to 1 over m times, and I'm just going to switch the order of x1 and x2 right here so it is the same order as our equation. So we're going to have minus k1 plus k2 times x1 minus c times x2 plus u. And if I just am a little more careful, I can say this is minus k1 plus k2 divided by m x1 minus c divided by m x2 plus 1 over m u. And this is exactly what we have we had right here. So we have an equation for this part of our matrix. So now 
this is going to be minus k1 uh minus k1 plus k2 over m this is going to be minus c over m x2 and this is going to be 1 over m u so now that we've done our input and we filled out our input we now need to go to our output and our output is going to be, well, we only have one output. We only have one output Y. So Y is going to be equal to some matrix C. And we know what X is, right? We know X is going to be X1, X2, plus we're going to have some matrix D plus U, and we know U is just U. So what are these variables? Well, Let's go back and look at our equations. And right here, we have an equation where we define y. We have y is equal to x. If we write this differently, we have uh, x1. We have y is equal to 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 0u. So now we have 1, 0. We're going to have 0 for u. And these are our equations for our state representation. Now, my suggestion is if you're struggling with this, just do a bunch of problems from the back of your textbook. When you do enough problems, you'll start to see the patterns and this will become much easier because I know at first it's like, well, why am I picking this? How do I know my output? Why am I taking this derivative? But it's the same pattern that emerges again and again. And I promise if you just work problems from the back of your textbook, it will start to make sense.